Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. Today we will be understanding Giardia. What is Giardia? What are the structural features present in this parasite? Those who are new to this channel, let me tell you that uh, we are covering various parasites, their life cycles, their structure and function, as well as uh, some of the important points regarding uh, the parasite clinical features, uh, pathogenesis, and, and today we will be covering Giardia. As you can see, in this uh, illustration-based video, I will be creating this entire illustration and then also discussing the specific functions of all these structures. One, th one thing is pretty convincing that the, the shape of Giardia looks like uh, the human face. It looks like uh, it has eyes and uh, one nose over here and maybe, uh, you know, these structures, they look like the mouth and it, it feels like it has uh, this human face uh, uh, face appearance and also have these, uh, you know, hair-like structures, facial hair-like structures on, on this parasite. But anyways, these are, these are this is not a human face. These are not facial hairs. These are different structures. And we'll discuss all these structures in detail in this video. So I hope that you will be able to understand what Giardia is, what are the different structures that are present in Giardia, and what is the function of every structure. So Giardia is basically nothing but it's a tiny parasite that causes the diarrheal disease called giardiasis. Giardia is found on the surface of uh, you know various uh, objects. It is present on the surface of soil, and it can be present in food, water that has been contaminated with the with feces uh, that is infected uh, on the feces uh, from infected people or animals. So that is uh, one important point to understand here. Another feature is a single-celled organism. So its entire organism is just one single cell, and it belongs to the uh, the phylum Protozoa. That is that is one point. And if we talk about its size, so it may, it's a very tiny tiny organism. The size is about ten to twenty micron in length and five to fifteen micron in the in the width. So it's a little bit longer than uh, the overall width of this uh, particular parasite. Now, without any delay, let's move on to the designing part uh, and where I will try to design this entire structure from individual components that I've uh, already designed. And uh, we'll also discuss the functions of individual structures. Right? So uh, without any delay, let's move on to the next slide where I have all these components already, already, already designed and then I have to compile them together uh, to create that final GID illustration. So let's start with the body, uh, body of the parasite. So uh, this is uh, this is the body of the parasite over here, and as you can as you can clearly see, it is it is not round. It's kind of a leaf shaped structure that it has, and then from here I will I will take other components. So Giardia is uh, basically a very simple cellular uh, organism, a single cell structure. It is eukaryotic. That is you have to understand it's not prokaryotic organism. It's eukaryotic organism, meaning it will have true nucleus inside a nuclear membrane, right? So we'll we'll see what are those structures and. It will also have some other components, uh, uh, you know, the other components are also there, uh, which are typical to the eukaryotic, eukaryotic cell. Right, so okay, we'll start uh, with, the, with the structure, the first structure, which is uh, the flagella. So I have uh, the flagella, flagellar structure that are, that, that are basically on the top, and you can, you can see over here that we have seen in, uh, in the Giardia illustration. So this is on the on the top end and then in the middle end and then you will have in the in the pointed region of Giardia. So I guess I have to make it a little bit smaller in size otherwise it will occupy my entire uh, entire um, screen basically. Okay so I think uh, let's make it like this. So this is the top and then uh, next pair of flagellum that are present in the middle so basically right over here somewhere uh, I think that should be that should be suitable and the Another one, another pair is also connected, uh, not connected, or it's, I can say it's, uh, it's closer to the second pair. Uh, all right, so I don't like it. It should, be, it should be more like this, correct? So that is the third pair. All right, next is the, the final one, which is over here, present on the, the bottom side of the Giardia parasite 
So that's the, the last one over here. Now if we talk about uh, the function of flagella, and we have already discussed uh, this this point so many times, so flagella, they are important for, for uh, pathogenicity, especially in Giardia, because the, the parasite need to move from one place to another. So that is very important using, uh, using these structures. And uh, next is, it has a flapping uh, wing motion because of this, uh, th these uh, structures. And, uh, and, and coordinated motion is, is there because of the beating of the flagella. These hair-like projections, they basically, they start from the anterior and they end up in the posterior region. And uh, because of that, the giardia can move uh, from, one place, uh, from one place to another, especially in the, in the gut. Another important function of uh, these, these, uh, these structures is the sensory function. They can also, uh, you know, detect changes in the environment and they can also help uh, Giardia to sense if there is any mechanical motion and if there is any, any uh, you know, change in temperature, all those things can be sensed, although there are receptors present to, to detect the change in uh, the other environmental conditions, but uh, most probably uh, it, it can also detect some of the mechanical changes and uh, that is why these, these structures, they are very, very important and, uh, and really important for the survival of the parasite inside the host. Right now, let's move on to the another structure, which is uh, called the the sucking disc. Right, so that is that is over here. This is what I've designed. Now I have to take it on the top over here, right like this. I think it's it's a good fit over there. So Jadia has uh, the sucking disc. And they are also known as a ventral disc or adhesive disc. It's a it's a concave. You need to understand the structure is that is why you can see this, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, um, the color change. And that what I'm trying to uh, mention over or show you is the the concave kind of a uh, structure, which is surrounded by the ring of microtubules. It's play. It is going to play a vital role in Giardia's life cycle. Uh, by attaching to the host intestinal uh, lining. So this is how Giardia attaches itself to the, the host intestine. Through a combination of uh, suction forces generated by the flagellar movement and adhesive proteins on the surface. So not only this, this disc is going to help out, but there are some proteins present in Giardia, plus the motion of the flagella will, will cause uh, the additional force uh, to create that environment for the attachment. And attachment is very, very important for its pathogenicity. By, by attaching to the host, it can ensure <clears throat> various, various uh, uh, pathological complications. So that is why the attachment is really, really essential uh, when it comes to GRDI pathogenesis. Okay, so I think uh, that looks much, much better. So we have discussed the role of uh, sucking disc because uh, the attachment it can also absorb nutrients right now i think uh, it's time to label these things so i'll, I'll start with uh, the flagella so although i have only one label so in bracket i'm writing four pairs because you can see one two three four now i hope that you will never forget giardia uh, uh, it contains four four pairs of flagella so total eight uh, flagella are there next is the sucking disc so this is the sucking disc over over here let, let me take it uh, on the top so you can see this is the second disc, right? These, uh, these two structures are there. So next structure, let's see, we have a nucleus, right? Now nucleus, this is, okay, so this is the illustration that I've created for nucleus. So because of this, it looks like the human shaped because they, they give you that, uh, you know, illustration of, uh, uh, or the appearance of eyes in this case. And then, uh, you know, there are uh, the central structures inside inside the nucleus. So let me also design these two structures. I'll explain what are these. Now, look at this. Right? It just looks like a human face because uh, because of this. And on top of that, I've used a dark color, black color. Uh, so it, it looks really, really uh, very, very close to a human face. Now, look at this. Right. So what, what are these? What are these? So let's talk about uh, the nucleus first, then we'll talk about the, the karyosome, right? So let me label this, uh, label this first. So this is the nucleus over here. And then next is the karyosome that is present in the, in the center. Now we'll talk about uh, both of these structures one by one. Uh, what are these? Nucleus, we, we probably already know a lot about nucleus. Uh, we might not be aware of the karyosome, so that is an uh, important structure to discuss over here. Let me make it a little bit balanced, the size of these. 
Okay, so now you can you can actually see the illustration is getting created and final structure is coming out from these uh, individual illustrations. It's not that difficult to create all those things. That is also one of my uh, point to tell you that look at this. So it's it's not that difficult to create an illustration, and you can also you know maybe if you want to uh, make a a project for your biology assignments, you can you can create GRDR structure, and everyone uh, will be very very impressed because impressed because the structure is so close to human face, and you can even create masks and uh, you know distribute these masks to uh, to uh, your classmates, and um, and that will be very very uh, innovative and also uh, very very uh, easy for uh, anyone who wants to learn about GRDR. All right, so uh, let's talk about nucleus. So Giardia is, uh, as I told you, it's eukaryotic organism, means it will have a true nucleus, so nucleus is there. It is enclosed uh, by the nuclear membrane, so that is also very important. It contains two similar sized nucleus, or nuclei in plural, uh, within a single cell with distinctive features. Right, so that is one important point that I want to mention. The presence of two nucleus in uh, Giardia is, uh, is it's you know why the two nucleus are there. Uh, there are so many hypotheses or uh, you know suggestions made by researchers, but most of the most of them they point towards its adaptability and rapid reproduction, uh, because because it's a parasite it needs to uh, reproduce very very fast to survive inside the host, and because of that it can basically cause a significant damage inside the host tissue. So all those all those things are very very important when you have nucleus. That means you have genetic material inside the nucleus, uh, right? And also it helps the idea to adapt to various environmental condition conditions. Okay, next moving on to the karyosome. So we talked about nucleus, which is this uh, yellowish structure. Now let's talk about uh, the karyosome. Karyosome is also known as central karyosome. It's present in the center, so it's also known as central karyosome. It's distinctive, that's why I made it uh, darker in color. And it's dense structure, distinct, distinctive, dense and compact structure, which is present inside the Giardia nucleus. So Giardia, what species we are talking about? We are, we are talking about uh, Giardia uh, lamblia, lembi so L-A-M-B-L. L I A Lemblia is the species name. Uh, Giardia is the genus, and it is pathogenic uh, to humans. Next is Giardia is still not, uh, you know, completely understood in res in regard to its uh, karyosome. Why karyosome is present? What's the exact role of this one? Most of the time, uh, the the presence of karyosome is related uh, with the uh, the gene expression. If if you remember one of my lectures, I've talked about gene expression. For gene expression, uh, the 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 genetic material should be loosely bound if the gene expression is active. If the gene expression is, is not active, then it will be more compact and it will be more dense. It will not be accessible. And because of that, maybe there is this condensed or tensed form of the, uh, the genetic material inside the nucleus. So that is, uh, that is one of the key points to remember in this case. Next structure that we have is, uh, let, me, let me maybe you know, make it a little bit larger. Oh, that was too big. Okay, so that one structure is there. Now, this should be below the, the other structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, copy and paste them. And now it is behind this. So this is very, very convenient. Correct. So you can see the structures. And I'll also bring the other structures that are there, which is called the parabasal body. Okay, so this is the parabasal body. And now our structure is complete. Let me label these two important structures. One is uh, exoneme, that is the, the central structure that I've shown you, this one. And next one is uh, basically the parabasal body, which is right over, over there. That is uh, giving us the, the illustration of human mouth, smiley faced. Although most of the structures, uh, even, even real structures, if you see the real microscopic images of Giardia, you will definitely be surprised to see how, how uh, you know, similar the structure is uh, to, to human face. So that is very, very interesting of this organism. Now, two structures we need to discuss. One is exoneme and second one is parabasal body. What are these two structures? Moving first to the Giardia exoneme. So exoneme, this is elongated structure. It's vital component found in flagella of Giardia lamblia. As I told you that this is the species of Giardia. It's a microtubule based structures. Microtubules are important uh, structures inside the cell. They provide strength, they, they provide support. It's a microtubule based structure responsible for wave-like motion of Giardia flagella. 
So you need that microtubular structure because of that it can create that wave motion. This motion enables the parasite to move through the host intestine. So this is highly important for flagellar motion, for GRDL motion. It plays a key role in pathogenicity because as I've already mentioned, it needs to move from one place to another place. Right. So this, you know, another another thing I did really play around when you when you when you just bring this very, very close to this, it becomes very angry face GRDR, right? Now it looks very, very angry and confused also, I don't know. Um, and then if I if I move these uh, to the to the top side, it's uh, it's not that angry. Yeah. Now this is uh, the the structure which is parabasal body. And what is the role of parabasal body? It's a significant cellular structure found in Giardia uh, lumblia. The parabasal body is specialized. It's a specialized organelle located near the basal body. Acts as an anchor for uh, multiple flagella. So parabasal body is basically they are connected and uh, provides the the anchoring strength uh, to the to the structure uh, of of giardia uh, to the flagellar structure of the giardia so this is very very important and then uh, you know the parabasal body is also associated with the uh, hydrogenosome like function uh, which contributes towards the en energy metabolism within the parasite so various uh, you know various functions are known for parabasal body parabasal body role in giardia is closely uh, related to its adaptation to low low oxygen environment uh, in the host. So its role is also there to survive under the low oxygen environment. Right. So you can note note that point down. All right. So I think now we are done with GRDR structure and its uh, and the detailed functions of every structure that we have covered in detail. So I hope uh, after this video, uh, you will be able to understand Giardia in more detail. And we have already discussed the function of individual structures. We have, uh, I've shown you that you can create the individual components and finally create the illustration like this. It will help you in your project. It, it will help you in homework and uh, all, all uh, even exams because we have already discussed the functions of every component of Giardia. So I hope, uh, you know, the video was informative. If the video uh, video is informative, then please support the channel. Please share the video with your friends. Please uh, press the like button, hit the like button because it's really, really important uh, so that we can create more content that can help everyone who wants to study parasites, who wants to study biology, who wants to study basic sciences. So we are making a lot of videos in various areas. And if your support is there, we will be creating more and more videos that will definitely help millions around the globe. So what, what I expect from you is only few things. If you like the content, then please hit the like button. If you like uh, the channel, please subscribe to the channel and, uh, you know, do post your comments. Your comments are highly valuable. If you think the video was uh, uh, was important uh, for you, video, uh, you know, helped you in your studies, then please do post uh, the comment and I'll definitely reply to your comment. All right. With that note, I will conclude here and we'll meet in the next video. Till then, take care.